Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how I use Texture XYZ inside a ZBrush to get quick and easy skin detailing. So since my interview with my friend Jason Hill, I've gotten a lot of questions asking on expanding how I use Texture XYZ to get my skin detail. So today I'm going to show you a little bit more about my approach and process to doing so. So first, let's take a look at what I'm going to be using. For this workflow, I use the displacement maps from Texture XYZ. This map can be found in the displacement face section. Once I've selected the texture map that I want to use, the next thing that I'm going to do is just a quick little bit of prep inside Photoshop. Here you can see this is just the base displacement image, and I also opened up the tertiary detail image. We're going to take the tertiary detail and we're going to copy it on top of the displacement map, and then we're going to go ahead and set the screen mode to overlay. Once you do that, you can see that just combining the two gives it a little bit more of a crisper result. Once we have this, I'm going to go ahead and scale the image down just a tad so it isn't quite as large of a file to use. Lastly, let's go ahead and save out the image and we're going to save it out as a PNG file. Okay, so now let's go ahead and jump over to ZBrush and get started. Here's a head from one of my past projects that we're going to be demoing on. So the first thing we're going to do is come down to the Morph Target palette and store a new Morph Target. This is going to come in handy to help fix a couple of issues that may arise in your process. Next, we're going to come to the layer stack and we're going to create a new layer that's going to store all of our details onto it. Now that we've gotten those in place, let's go ahead and load our displacement map. We'll come up to the textures tab and import our PNG that we went ahead and created. Once that's loaded, we'll select it and we're going to add it to the spotlight projection. Now to do the actual projection, I like to use the standard brush. When doing this, we want to make sure two things first before we get started. The first is we want to make sure our brush is set to RGB, and the next is we want to make sure that Z Add is turned off. If we have Z Add enabled, this will cause the model displace, which isn't what we really want here. Once we've done that, we're just going to go ahead and start aligning the texture and painting it on. For this, I try to use the general landmarks of the face, like the corners of the mouth, or even the wrinkles where the eye lay. The nice part about using Spotlight is it's rather easy to just spray over areas and clean things up as the process continues to roll along. So now that we've laid down a little bit of paint, I think we're at a good spot to start demoing the rest of the workflow. Let's go ahead and move over to Masking Palette. And in the Masking Palette, we're going to look for Mask by Color. Here in this palette, we're going to go ahead and hit Mask by Intensity. This is going to make our poly paint into a mask now. Next, we're going to come to our Deformation tab. There are going to be two options that we can use to accomplish creating this skin. The first is going to be Inflate Balloon, and the other is going to just be the basic Inflate. The Inflate Balloon can give good results. It's just a little bit more intensive on your computer and a little bit harder to dial in an exact amount that you want to use. The Inflate is a little bit easier to find the result that you want, um, but it doesn't quite add as much softness to the volumes or the details. Okay, so now that we have our details in place, you may have noticed that by doing this, this is actually inflating a large portion of the model that might be not necessarily desirable. So the easiest way to correct this is going to be to turn off the detail layer that we created so that the mesh is back at the original size. Next, we're going to lower the model to its lowest subdivision level and export out the model as an OBJ file. Once we've exported out our model, the next thing that we're going to want to do is create a new layer with the original detail layer turned back on. Let's go ahead and move our subdivision levels all the way back down to the lowest and import the OBJ that we exported, and you should notice a pop from the Geo so that it moves back to its original size. So one thing that you'll have noticed is that once we turn off the inflate layer, our actual original detail layer is going to amplify a little bit more, which probably isn't a desired result. Luckily, we have this information on a layer so we can make adjustments to the value so that this value isn't quite as strong if need be. The last thing I wanted to go ahead and show is the benefit of keeping the original model stored inside of a morph target. In most cases when doing a project like this, I actually like to project on skin over the entirety of the model, but in certain situations there's areas like the waterline or the inside of the nose or even sometimes the lips that I don't necessarily project on. 
So by not doing that, once I inflate the model, you'll notice these raised areas from the mask around some of those areas. So because we stored this onto a morph target, we're actually able to use the morph brush to fix some of these issues. So to do that, if you just go ahead and select a morph brush, you can go around some of the areas and paint out some of this raised elevated geometry and blend it in until you find the point that you're happy with it. And that's the way I like to go about projecting on detail inside ZBrush. Texture XYZ has a ton of great tools and resources to use to get details super fast, but this is one of the methods that I like to use in my own personal work. It gives a little bit more of a nice sense of control for me to control the detail that I get outside of the maps. So hopefully you guys found some of this stuff useful. If you have any suggestions for future videos or content, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below. Um, make sure to subscribe and see any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.